Welcome to Self Care with Stacy, where we explore all kinds of topics related to self care and the eight dimensions of self care framework. And today we are talking with Lisa Fisher of Lisa Fisher Styling. She is amazing. And this is not the first time we've done an interview. She is so wonderful and so full of knowledge that I had to ask her to come back. Um, she is a wardrobe stylist in the Seattle, Washington area, and we are going to talk about capsule wardrobes today. So if you're wondering what in the heck a capsule wardrobe is and how do you even begin to build one, we are going to go there and talk about all things capsule wardrobe. So I have to say this topic and many topics related to styling and personal branding are so, so important. And it is what I classify under the luminescent dimension of self-care. And that is how we illuminate our inner truth. It is how we show up in the world. It is all of the things that, that make us unique, our talents, our skills and passions and all of that, that come together and it's who we are in the world. Now that is tied to a lot of other things like our calling in the world, our life's work. They're so connected to um, this dimension. And not only is a capsule wardrobe a wonderful way to show up authentically, but it's also a way to simplify your life. I mean, I know when I downsized my life a few years ago and like literally crammed my life's possessions into the back of a van, uh, I was really glad I had a capsule wardrobe at that time. And Lisa was very helpful in getting me to that place where I had everything distilled down to my brand, my style, my colors, my shape, like it was all like glorious. So um, thank you so much, Lisa, for being here today. Um it is a pleasure and I could just sit here and just keep listening to you. <clears throat> I just, uh, I love this. I love your heart and your passion. And since you've walked through this, we've walked through this together. It makes it even that much more special. Yes, it, it really has been special. And I mean, it, the experience working with Lisa, I cannot, cannot stress enough. Like if you live in the Seattle area right now, and this is of interest to you, like you need to go to lisafisherstyling.com because it was absolutely life-changing for me. It was a period of time where I was very, very broken. Uh, my marriage was coming to an end and I just felt invisible. And I remember you coming to my home and actually walking me through the process of editing my closet. And I remember we found like a closet full of like black and white. Like I'd been hiding behind just blue jeans and black shirts for a really long time because I didn't know who the heck I was. I was just mm -hmm. completely invisible and felt like I didn't have a voice. And anyway, if anyone is listening and you kind of feel that way, like you've lost your sense of self, whether through your career, through parenting, through life transitions, it is critical to know and to connect with who you are uh, and one way we can do that is how we show up in the world. However, Lisa's work is not just surface work. Like I was talking to her before we started today and I was like, this is soul level work. It isn't not about putting on pink lipstick and uh, you know, flowery shirt. This is like, who are you? And how can we make that show up when you enter a room and you Come into the room that way. So um, I am super excited to talk about this and um, just thought maybe we could start with what in the world is a capsule wardrobe, Lisa? <laughs> I love it. You know, a capsule wardrobe is a, it's a cool wardrobe basics that can be paired together with that original basic collection and for the purpose of creating multiple outfits. Someone mentioned to me once, uh, they said, I wish 
there were still granimals or geranimals, something I believe may have been for children. Uh, I'm not familiar, um, but apparently if it had this animal, it could be worn, you know, this top can be worn with these bottoms and this jacket. And, uh, you know, it's maybe not as obvious uh, in today's day and age, but yet the concept is still there. Yeah, I love it. And I, I realized like when you walked me through the process of like, what, mm -hmm. how does a capsule wardrobe work? And it mm -hmm. all made so much sense. So when we did my style, uh, my, before we even did the closet edit, we had to figure out, you know, what is my shape? What are my colors? So that we could then go into the closet and kind of do an assessment and take inventory of what I had. But I remember this feeling of like relief when we landed on the colors, because I realized everything I loved the most in my closet were actually my colors. So it was no coincidence that they were my favorite. Mm -hmm. um, and being able to like even further distill out a personal brand from my experience working with you was amazing. Mm -hmm. So can you walk us through like how a capsule wardrobe works? We know that it is like everything mix and matches mm -hmm. and it's super easy to be able to pull things out of the closet because it all goes well together. You could pretty much do it blindfolded, right? Yeah, exactly. So, uh, and we will, let's jump in. Um, and maybe first what we can do is talk about what what is, what is not a wardrobe capsule. And what it's not is having in your closet. So if y'all would imagine your closet for a moment and think about if you had items in your closet that were one-offs, like one of a kind, and you had them on hangers side by side all through the closet. They're, they're one of a kind. They're meant to like, this is all in one outfit. Then it, it, it's hard, right? Because you open up your closet and it's just these particular things that are meant to go with one another and not with anything else. It's like a one-off, maybe special occasion or specialty. So the other end then is opening your closet and seeing foundational basics that can be, you know, it's a top, it's a bottom, it's a layering piece and imagining that these pieces can be worn together. A wardrobe capsule can change or transition seasonally. Right now we're, you know, go, we're spring. And so we have the next six months, spring, summer, but then after that fall, winter. And in some areas of the world, uh, you know, the, it might be sunny all year all year round or colder weather all year round. Here in the Northwest, it is definitely every season has its weather and it's pretty predictable. So just knowing what season or where you'll be in the world and then also what are your activities and what are you going to be doing in addition to what you st said, Stacy, about having items that are flattering for your shape, that are flattering for your skin tone and your colors, and are in styles that are you versus styles that you think you should be wearing because they're on trend or they were purchased for you or your best friend wears them or your mother or something like that. Uh, but what are those styles that actually you really love, right? And then once we know those three things, dressing for your shape, your colors, and your style, then looking at your lifestyle, then I think we just transition into what are those mix and match pieces. And I have some examples behind me uh, if we'd like to dive into what that can look like for an example, if you'd like. Yeah, let's roll. Okay, so uh, one of the things that I'm about is keep it simple, the KISS method, right? Keep it simple. K I if we do K I S S we could add on keep it simple sister, <laughs> which is you know let's let's just start with the basics. So every time I go into a wardrobe or into a closet, whether a woman has one closet or if she has a multiple, is I'm always looking for what are those foundation pieces that we can mix and match. And so here's the method to the madness: is I look at having key basics in lights in medium colors and darks, okay? And then from there, 
what I'm looking for is what I call score more with four pieces. So I'm looking for a top, I'm looking for two bottoms and a layering piece. So I want to, I want to lay the foundation. Okay. Yes, we are going to build, but when we lay the foundation, we're just looking for what are those interlocking basics. So an example of that is behind me here where the three colors I chose in this example, the light is like a white ivory. The, the medium color is blue and we have a couple different versions of blue. And then for the dark, we have black. So the idea is what you do within each of the color combinations in this example is we're looking for a top, two bottoms, and then a layer. And then I like to be able to mix and match within the color block. So the idea is that everything can be coordinated together. So here's a t-shirt and shorts and a t-shirt and pants. And these all happen to be from Target, you know, okay? And then the layering piece here that we're using for the example is a long cardigan. So what I love about this is it can be worn with the shorts. So this would be a monochromatic look. And then it can be also worn with the long denim. The first objection I might hear to this sort of a plan or strategy is, well, this is kind of boring. Or we might hear, I would never wear color on color. All right, so let's talk about that. Let's talk about boring. You know, I understand that too. Uh, I understand if this feels boring, um, but stay with me because what we're doing is we're building the, the interlocking, uh, you know, strategy right here. And we can get more, we can do more if we have more of basic pieces versus statement pieces, okay? The, the beauty is the next, the next part in the strategy is we can layer on those colors or those great patterns. But when we start with something that's plain or solid, it can really take our wardrobe farther. So essentially we can get four different outfits with just these four pieces, just by doing a couple of looks here without the layer. But then when we add on the layer, there's two more looks because we have two bottoms. Okay, so four outfits just right here. You change out your scarf, you add different jewelry, you add different shoes and a handbag, and you can literally take this section and it can look different every single day. Yeah, and I and have so to say, like when you were talking about your rule of three and rule of 10, which I think we talked about on the prior interview we've done. So mm -hmm. for those who are listening in, if you wanna go back and listen to that one, I was blown away by how accessories, the color of a handbag, shoes, scarf, jewelry, like it looks completely different the minute you accessorize differently. So I love that you're pointing that out, that those four outfits could turn into way more than that with accessories. Yeah, 100%, 100%. So then uh, in this next one, uh, the bottoms, one is a denim skirt and denim shorts, a basic tee, let's say, and these are all in blue, even though they're different variations of blue, that's fine. And then the jacket. So if you're looking back again, this could be one outfit. This is a second outfit. And then when we add the jacket, that's outfit number three. And this is outfit number, let's see. This would be outfit number four, this collection together, okay? So how many outfits do we have so far? Essentially, we have eight, right? But the beauty in the math is once we take this top from the light and we bring it over here to the medium, now we can start over. Right, and, and we can start to compound that, that whole look. And then essentially we did the same with the black. We have a black top, 
we have a short and and a legging and then we have a black cardigan we have a black cardigan so 12 pieces that are definitely interchangeable but watch this you're gonna you're gonna uh <laughs> you're gonna live in an rv and you're downsizing right like you've done and and my daughter's done uh, she lived in her Toyota Tacoma, then upgraded to a van, and now she uh, she bought an RV. And I tell you what, this is so beautiful because you can literally get over 40 outfits with 12 pieces, and you can change it up by just switching out your jewelry, scars, and uh, other accessories. Like, you know, add a, add a hat to something add a fun belt, a different shoes, and this becomes like your workhorse. Yes, so yes, 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 yes. I like, I'm so excited right now because, you know, we can look at this from so many different angles. Financially, I mean, can we say uh, budget friendly? You get some really nice quality pieces that when they're worn, you can replace them and you know what you need to replace and you get mm -hmm. the full wear out of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are so many reasons I think it makes sense to do the capsule wardrobe for space, whether or not you live in an RV, but that's certainly a great example because there is not a lot of space. Um, or even, you know, in smaller homes, you don't have, I, I don't have the space I used to in my closet and it's so nice to just have you know one little area that um you can see what you have when you get in there so mm -hmm. i love 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 this mm, yeah it's it, you know it's uh it is great and we've experienced the same thing we're empty nesters now and we went from you know living in a large home there was five of us uh, we raised three children and had a massive closet and today we live in a 1100 square foot uh, apartment and our our closet is maybe a fourth of the size and I share it with with my husband and the beauty is now I do some other tricks in terms of ro seasonal rotation where I'll store off season pieces but I tell you what um, the structure for even how to manage your closet totally changes and it you know it what it really does Stacy is it is it simplifies do i need four black t-shirts do <laughs> do i need 25 pairs of jeans or do i maybe need you know four or five you know a skinny a straight a wide uh, a crop right and and then rotate them out in the different seasons and now you know the the cost per use really becomes super effective. So if, if we're going to maybe up level our, our denim and invest a little bit more in our denim, but if we know we can wear them year round and they're a staple basic in our closet, wow, it feels so good. Instead of feeling like we have to go out and buy, 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 consume, consume, consume. When really it's more mix, mix, mix <laughs> than buy, 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 you know? Yes, absolutely. And I love the example that you gave here with getting three colors, like you're working with three colors. And as I worked with you to determine what my best colors were, I learned that a brown or a dark brown was my black, right? Black mm -hmm. was not my best color, although I still have pieces of black that I now wear more as an under, like I'll layer over certain pieces or in the color that is in a pattern, but it isn't like the overpowering theme because earth tones and warmer colors are my palette. They, they uh, align with my brand. They align with my skin and hair and eye color and all of that. When you do your assessments, um, it just makes so much sense when you can look in your closet and you love everything in there and it no longer becomes that you, I mean, let's be honest, we have a giant closet and we wear a very small subset of those items anyway. Um, mm -hmm. And there's a reason that that on sale top you bought is in the back crammed on a hanger and it's never seen the light of day. 
so this really does simplify that process. So what do you suggest, Lisa, when someone is, is thinking about right now the giant collection of clothes that they have, maybe in varying styles, colors, sizes, all of that? Where in the world do you even begin to whittle down your collection to create a capsule wardrobe? Sure, sure. Uh, this is such a great question. And if anyone has ever said this, oh, I have a closet stuffed full of clothes, but yet I feel like I have nothing to wear. <laughs> then what we know is that this is a perfect time to do a closet edit. And that involves really taking everything out of the closet and putting it onto the bed and just start trying things on really first. Uh, have a full length mirror so you can see everything top to bottom. Uh, no cheating, you know, it doesn't really count like to bring your chair from the, you know, the living room or kitchen into the bathroom if you only have a waist and above. We need a full length mirror. And just look at your, the fit, look at the fit. Uh, how do you fill in it? I often say, look at a scale one to one to 10 or consider in your mind, a scale one to 10. Five is okay. One is eh, like, I, I just, I, oh, hate it. And 10 is love, love, love. I mean, you know, when you put on something, you're like, I love this. So really what we want to gauge is we want to be in that eight to 10, right? We might have a few six and sevens, and those are going to be maybe layering pieces. Um, but anything that's like, oh, like one to five, just edit, just edit them out. Or maybe ask yourself, if I were to get this altered or tailored, might I love it? Now that's something to consider right? Yeah. Because if the fit can be altered, but you love the color, it's in a great style, it's really good for your lifestyle, it is really worth it to consult uh, a seamstress or an alterations expert. But you know what, um, Stace, it's really biting the bullet and taking the self-care for yourself, taking the time out, spending the day doing this, turning on some great music, and just start trying clothes on. And then putting the clothes back into your closet that you love, love, love. And start writing, you know, get out a scratch pad, get out your phone, and just what are the holes in your closet? Meaning, wow, I don't, I don't really have that many jeans, or I don't have any lightweight sweaters, or I don't have any heavy sweaters. What are what do you what do you feel you're missing? Uh, and if you're actually ready to do this, I do have a free download over on lisafisherstyling.com and it's a two page PDF and it walks you through the different steps of doing a closet edit. So that can kind of be your friend, if you will, uh, while you go through an edit because it's not easy. Let's just face it. You know, we pick up something in our closet and it was bought for us from someone that brings up memories, right? So it, it could be that. It could be, man, this was my, my grandmother's something or other, or something that triggers emotion or value or experiences. Um, there's been lots of breakdowns when I've been with clients um, from what something carries emotionally. And if we love something because of the emotion, but we, we know we won't wear it, that's an indication to maybe store it, but it doesn't get to live in your closet anymore. Yes, that was such a beautiful experience when you and I took everything out of my closet when I lived in Seattle. And yes, we mean everything, like every shoe, scarf, purse, thing you have on the top shelf, like everything leaves the closet. So you can truly do like a full assessment. I remember how like stacked up my bed was with clothes, just like so many clothes. And the one thing that I do remember is when I would try things on and maybe I loved it on the hanger, but then when I saw it on myself in the mirror, or even better, when you took a picture, like if I was kind of like, oh, I don't know, I don't know, 
you would take a picture of me and then show me the picture. Like sometimes that even changed the way I was like, okay, that is not flattering at all. And I love it on the hanger and it might look beautiful on someone else. So I am going to gift it to the donation bin because it has served the purpose for me. And now it's time to give that to someone else who might benefit. And um, it, it, then when you get to go shopping from your own supplies and put back only the things you love, like when I was loading up my sprinter van with only things that I loved, I was like, it was such a source of joy for me. Yes, I left a lot of things behind, but like, you know, when you look in your closet and you see this beautiful collection of things that make you feel good when you leave your house, when you're, gosh, when you're even at home, I mean, when you feel yeah. good wearing, it changes everything. It changes your relationships, how productive you are at work, like just all kinds of things. It's, it's way more important than, than just you know, uh, a surface level beauty project, if that mm -hmm. even makes any sense. Mm. Yeah, it's, uh, here's the deal, is I feel that, I mean, if we, if we just get really basic, we can't go naked. <laughs> we need to, wearing clothes is part of our culture. And so what we put on ourselves. Uh, does affect how we feel. It's it just does, and you know I can remember being a young girl. I was probably seven or eight, and here's my earliest memory about this very subject: is my mom was getting ready to go out on a date, and she was meeting her girlfriends, and then they were they had some they were then they were meeting their dates, and I think one of the gals was married. And uh, my mom was single. And I remember like, I was all excited for her cause she had been talking about this special night and I'm on her bed, all the pillows around and I'm cross-legged and I'm like, like almost like I'm getting ready to watch a good movie, right? And my mom started off very happy. And then she started the getting dressed process. And I remember specifically, she's looking this direction, looking in the full length mirror, I'm over here on the bed and I just recall when she would put something on, she would look at a particular part of her body and she would start like talking to herself in the mirror and then like yelling. And then I just remember this almost like rage of just like ripping the top off and ripping the jeans off. You know how they go inside out? They, she would keep it that way and huck it across the, the room. And then she was angry and spewing words at herself in the mirror. And then I, I was scared because everything changed in a moment. And then I was so confused though, because my mom to look at her is a beautiful woman. She reminds me as I got older of Elizabeth Taylor. She had that look about her and I couldn't just understand as a young girl, what was happening. Cause I knew how I saw her, but then I watched this and I knew I knew then something was wrong. And as I grew older, it just morphed into, into this ability to see a woman as she could be. And then as I grew into, you know, um, being a mom myself and having a daughter, it became critical to help her to see herself as beautiful, right? Um, not all these things, these other things that, you know, and so how to dress your body that's flattering to your unique shape became all of a sudden very important. You know, school pictures, right? Remember when you're a kid and you're going to your school picture? Well, watching and helping my daughter. And it, it, so it was those sort of things. But as an adult, don't we do those? We're social media or we're taking a picture for our LinkedIn or something. There's that. We flash back, I think, to when we're in elementary school doing our photos. And like, I hate photos taken, right? I've heard people say. Um, and so now the closet can be, I feel like, one of the most vulnerable areas, one of the most vulnerable rooms in the entire house, more so than even the bedroom, you know? 
people are op pretty open to having me like in the bedroom, but the closet, I feel like that's a, that's a sacred space. So being invited into someone's closet, whether it's virtually or in person, I feel like is like one of the biggest honors that I get to, to have in my life because of how much emotion is there. So it's anyhow, so, that just so true. I mean, and I think that speaks to why you do the work you do, because I know that when you see every woman, you see how beautiful she is. And it's just a matter of helping her see that. And your, um, it's not even like a tagline. It's why you do what you do. The image strong messaging that you have. Like, I remember that so clearly that you want women to feel image strong, like strong being you're showing up confidently because this is how you are created, right? Mm -hmm. You were created however you're created and you're beautiful. And so let's figure out, um, how to make you feel beautiful so that you can see that when you look in the mirror. And I think that's just a, a testament to the work that you do because it wasn't nearly as difficult as I had worked it up in my mind, you know, like I'm uh, inviting you into my closet and we're like, okay, I've had this in here in the back forever. And there's a reason I'm not wearing it. And it just made everything so much simpler. Um, to be in love with, with that smaller collection. So I love that, um, that you're doing this work in the world. And if you guys haven't already go download the two page or the closet edit, because, uh, and this is something we've actually been talking about in the lifestyle design studio is some of the members have been doing closet edits and, you know, the spring cleaning, spring organizing. And so we're like talking about, okay, what kind of hangers you use? And like we, organizing is also a big part of self-care because those of us who don't like to see clutter everywhere, um, we want to see, we feel more calm when things are tidy. And that is something else that the capsule wardrobe solves is this cluttery feeling that your closet has when it's, you know, you've got 40 years of different sizes and colors and everything else in there. And even when we did a closet edit, I remember I had some, a couple suits that I really loved. Like, I remember I had, you know, job interviews and important meetings that I had worn the suit to. And I finally was like, you know, it's not really my, like, I can replace this now with something else that's a better fit uh, for me. And, and so anyway, it was a wonderful experience and I highly, highly recommend if you don't feel comfortable, once you get in your closet and you still have questions, um, Lisa has some wonderful resources, both, um, virtually. I don't know that you're doing one-on-ones yet, but you have a lot of, um, options currently for being able to work remotely virtually, mm -hmm. um, to help you know, kind of put the capsule wardrobe and do some of um, the styling virtually. So can you tell us anything, Lisa, about what you currently have um, that, that you're offering if someone does need help putting together a capsule wardrobe? Yeah, you know, it's, it's been so interesting uh, with this time of, you know, working through, through COVID and with people going, gosh, I love this. I want to work together. I need some help. How do we do it? And so now we have a virtual package, which I, 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 we were just testing it out to see like, is this helpful? And gals have been like, this is the bomb, like this so helps. And so, yeah, we have a virtual package. It's a four hour package. Uh, and what it does is we chunk it down. So the first hour is assessment and we, we're, and we do it seasonally. And so we're like, okay, let's open up the closet and what do we have, right? And so we get, we, we do a mini checklist of what we have. And in that first session, we do a little bit of an assessment of, all right, so let's help to understand what shape you have. What are your measurements? Knowing your numbers. When was the last time we all had a bra fitting? You know, those sort of things. What's your inseam? What's your rise? I mean, all of this math that we hear about, we need to know, but with more ordering online, 
and knowing your numbers has never been more important to be able to help streamline the online ordering process. So we do some of that. We can do color analysis and we can also really assess your style characteristics in this session. And then I personal shop for two hours uh, for the gals based on the holes that they have in their closet or their collection, right? And, and the gals are just like, hey, if you can just do it for me, send me links, that would just make my life like the most joyous ever. And then we have the last hour, the fourth hour, um, which is usually two weeks out to give the gals time to purchase uh, items from those links. And then we do a style session. I just did one before our uh, call today and the gal lives on the East Coast and she's like, I'm done. I, I, I have everything I need for spring, summer. Like I'm just set. And she maybe purchased 10 to 12 items, you know, and it just made it so easy for her and she's busy and, and uh, she just doesn't want to deal with scouring online. So anyways, that's what we're doing right now. Yeah, I love, love, love that. Um, the one thing I was thinking when you were talking earlier about, depending on where you are, your lifestyle, and you know, here I was moving from Seattle, Washington, all the way. Now I live in Florida. And of course, I don't need puff coats as frequently as I did, right? And rain yeah. gear and all of that. But what I discovered was my capsule didn't change. I layer differently now. But I didn't really get rid of anything else. I had to purchase a few more like lightweight sweaters. But other than that, I was like so excited that I didn't, I was dreading, like I'm in a different climate now and I'm going to have to re, you know, repurchase my entire wardrobe. But really it didn't change a whole lot. So I think there's just so many reasons to adopt this kind of, uh, styling collection is the capsule really is a beautiful thing. Even if you love clothes and you want to have a lot of them, um, I think it still makes a lot of sense for uh, just self-care in general. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, and the thing to this too is once, once the foundation, the basics are in place, then we can layer on the next level of fun, the prints, the patterns, the textures, the pops of color, and you literally create outfits that people will be like, you never wear the same thing twice. It will look like that. But yet, you know, and that can be sort of our little secret that you might only have 12, you know, mix and match pieces <clears throat> and that these pops of colors are some great things. For example, you might be, I want to do yellow or I want to do, you know, an animal print of some sort, um, add in some statement shoes or handbag, and then you'll start to know where you should spend your money if you're wanting to buy something that's a lifelong piece, like a certain handbag. But if you, if you already have your basics done, then even your investment handbag, you'll know can mix and match based on the colors of the, the metal, right? Or the, the type of leather perhaps. Um, so it really does make sense even long-term. So it's good. It's so good. Well, thank you so, so much, Lisa, for giving us the lowdown on what a capsule wardrobe is, how to get started, like building that foundation, which is the first step. And then, you know, like you said, adding the color, the accessories, the prints and all of that. Um, and they can be interchanged with the trends mm -hmm. that come and go. That's one thing I've loved about it too, is that, you know, I don't want a whole closet full of the new trendy types of cut top or whatever it is, but I can easily move it in and out and not spend a whole lot of money doing it because it's just, you know, the type of top or bottoms or, or whatever. Um, so it, it really does simplify everything. I love the word simplify. And if that's what's on your mind, you know, if that's a word for your year or anything like that is simplify or ease, uh, peace, freedom, <laughs> I, I test this out, test out uh, a wardrobe capsule. It could just be that thing that really complements, you know, what you're up to.
for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you again. And, and those who are listening, go to Lisa Fisher styling.com. Fisher has a C in it. So Lisa Fisher styling.com to get your download, to do your own closet edit, and then share with us what you discover. I would love to hear what you find out and uh, what you come up with as you start doing your own edits to simplify your wardrobe and just to feel better when you're, you know, conducting day-to-day life, right? Like we want to feel good and to be able to show up fully. And this is just one of the many ways we can do that. So thank you again, Lisa. Anything else that, that you feel called to share before we close up our discussion today? Oh, thank you so much. Um, you know, I just... I feel like if you're if you're new to this subject or if you're revisiting this subject is I would just encourage you to maybe just let go of feeling like it's um, hard or difficult or boring or just kind of let release release of what we might think it is and just begin an experiment and uh, reach out with any questions uh, maybe start slowly maybe just create you know, a, one basic uh, wardrobe capsule and test it. If you hate it, then the greatest thing is you never have to go back to it, but you might find that you love it. But sometimes we just have to release our preconceived ideas or notions about it and just start. And, and then it might, you might find you're just in love with it and you'll take it even into uh, like your bathing suits and wraps and things like that. You might just find like you are in love with it. So that would be my, my last thing. And, and thank you. You are one of my favorite people in my life. And you are the first one who ever brought to my attention of self-care and personal styling and this subject. So I just want to, you know, turn the focus and attention to you. Um, you are a bright light in this world and self-care um, in this, in this busy time of life. I just appreciate your passion and I just want to thank you, Stacy. Um, you are what women need and I just appreciate the work and what you're up to. Thank you so much, my friend. I, I feel so blessed that you're willing to come keep sharing messages with, with those who really are um, focusing on self-care. And I know there's a lot of us who see that value. And once you, once you start seeing how it plays out in your life when you do um, take investment in yourself, uh, you just, you can't not, you know, because it really is so very powerful in allowing you to do the work that you're meant to do in this world. So it's been wonderful to catch up with you. And thank you so much for bringing this, uh, this topic to light for us. And can't wait to hear what everyone does with this information. And, and we'd love to hear how your capsule wardrobe, wardrobe goes as time goes on. So thanks again, Lisa. Thank you, hon. Have a good rest of your day. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.